Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant. We are back for some more Rogue Trader. We fought off um, the illusion of Theodora von Valencius here, or her warp manifestation, against some pink horrors, some blue horrors, and then some, you know, uh, mutants, I guess. And we are now going to explore this area and speak with Edira. Instead of regular symbols and numbers, the screens display slanted script, almost resembling handwriting in an unknown language. Give me the goods. Oh, battle cycle boots. The wearer gains perception bonus percent dodge until the start of their next turn for each enemy affected by their psi power or cycle staff attacks. And it stacks. Hmm. Interesting. This this could be good because lightning hits four people. I like that. Warp conductor gloves. Uh, I think it requires unsanctioned psyker. Interesting. Warp conductor gloves. After triggering a psychic phenomena or perils of the warp, the psi rating is increased by plus one until the end of combat, and the wearer gains momentum and temporary wounds equal to their resolve. All right. <clears throat> I mean, this will not prevent her from getting dropped if she summons a demon, right? Well, we're gonna have to find out. A new challenge Edita, what say you? Oh, I cannot speak to her, okay. But definitely some interesting items. Uh, none of this matters except, except the grenades, I guess. This is a blinding, and this is a force grenade. Pascal got a trauma, but it's fine. We're in the ship, so we're gonna heal that right up. And we came from over here. Sister Argenta, you are always shrouded in a greenish-gray mist when I see you. Is it me that troubles you? Or is it whatever I can see behind it? My soul is open to the light and his faithful servants. The rest is merely fleeting frailties that hold no significance. Okay. Interesting. Sometimes they they are voiced, other times they are not. I I'm guessing this is the exit. Yeah. Um, no other goods to pick up. Let's go. I'll try and speak with Edira now. We should be able to talk to her. Oh, come on, loading. I didn't pause the video because I thought it was going to be quick. <laughs> it was not. Oh, and before I continue, there is something that was mentioned a long time ago in a comment um, that I've been keeping in the back of my mind, and I think I'm actually going to use it. Uh, someone suggested looking over the combat speed settings Currently, I have it on demand, which means that whenever I want to speed up any actions uh, in combat, I can just press space. But I think I'm going to have this set to always. However, I'm going to leave the animations at the regular speed. But I am going to skip non-attack animations. This means that every single time we buff someone, the animation is removed. I think it's going to save up a lot of time, hopefully. So let's apply this and see if it works the way I think. Uh, that's something I've been meaning to do for some time now, but I, I kept forgetting. Uh, let's go for Idira. Idira, talk to me. When Idira sees you, her lips curve into a smile and she nods at something over your shoulder. Have you recovered from your encounter with the false Theodora? I'm not going to lie. I haven't. Maybe I never will. But I'm not hearing random voices anymore. And I haven't been calling anyone from the other side. No. All that's done with. After what you did for me, I can't let you down again. Okay. Very well, Adida. We will hope for the best. Yes, sir, Lord Captain. We will. I have learned that our cash is left by Theodora somewhere on Dargonus and Kyavagama. Do you know anything about this? Me? <laughs> Not a clue, Lord Captain. I don't know who Lady Theodora would have told about a thing like that, but it definitely wasn't me. 
Why would you whisper that to me now? Why? Oh. Lord Captain, I don't know anything about Cash's or Lady Theodore's secrets, but the voices. The voices have just reminded me about something. I was once given the chance to try some real wine. Lady Theodora gave me some. Not just any old synthetic booze, but her favorite plonk. She always drank it in her palace. It was golden in color, and its name was Flame of Purity. <laughs> A silly name, but the flavor was so intense and like nothing I'd ever tasted before or since. Apologies. It's probably not important, but I don't know anything more than that. Hmm. <clears throat> so this seems like random banter, but I'm actually going to jot down this name, Flame of Purity. So... Flame of Purity related to the caches. I wonder if there will be some kind of uh, necessary code or password to access some of the caches. And maybe this is relevant? We will see. Of course. Okay, so let's uh, equip Idira before I forget. So she has the stuff. Every time the weather deals damage, the target's weapon skill and ballistic skill is reduced by 5 for 2 rounds, stacking up. It's not bad, but I do like this Warp Conductor Gloves. It actually encourages me to try and trigger Psychic Phenomena. But, again, if she blows herself up, <laughs> this won't save her. I was actually thinking about something. I might as well share it with you guys because, you know, I think it's important that I share the thought process behind some of my choices here. I was thinking... About this thing here, the Sanguine Siphon. Every time the Psyker deals damage, they gain one stack of the Sanguine Siphon effect. If that damage was dealt to a target adjacent to the Psyker, they gain plus two. Doesn't matter. When the Psyker suffers little damage, the stacks of Sanguine Siphon are removed to reduce this damage by one for each stack, until either all stacks are removed or the damage is no longer lethal. So, I'm wondering if this would prevent... Um, the demon summons, or I should say, uh, the demons will always will always be summoned, but maybe it would prevent her from getting knocked down, because my, it, it might actually save her. I'm saying this because the description of the, um, the demon summon says that she would be knocked out, or uh, knocked unconscious, but in the combat log I've noticed that she takes 70 damage. So if maybe I could raise her wounds up to 70 uh, with the help of that particular talent, I'm wondering if it would work. I, I'm not sure if it would, but just, you know, food for thought. Maybe in a future level up I'll consider it. Though I do have other things that I want first. Um, okay, so I went there. <clears throat> I think I'm mining plus steel. And I want to visit Omicron. Or have I seen this one already? Okay, uh, let me see. I don't remember if this symbol means that it's mining or if it's available to mine. It's available to mine, okay. This one has... Ah, the magnetic storm, I had written something like diviner machines. Okay, so we don't have that yet. Okay, so let's continue exploring. And I think I came to the Omicron system just to reach this one without having to go through the, the orange thingy route. The warp jump went surprisingly smoothly. None of the deck officers on duty reported any incidents. However, a strange discovery awaited the Lord Captain when he returned to his quarters. The bed was unmade, and the impression of a head was still visible on the pillow. There were no other signs of intrusion. The guard swore under oath that nobody had entered the Lord Captain's quarters. The Immaterium released us from its grip, this time. 
I'm not exactly sure what that means. Let's chart. We are up to five navigator points. And we're gonna visit System Speculu. Oh god, unknown ships. This probably means death to me. <laughs> Let me actually do a quick save. Because I will try and battle them. This looks like a water planet. Oh. It has a place to explore. Xenotech! I need this! So this has three. And I require how much? Two. Awesome. Gimme. Yes! More profit factor. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wait, we still have three? No, that, that can't be right. Oh no, I have... what? I think it's, it's bugged over here. Because we have plus three, minus two. So it should be one. And Augur's Anomaly. We're gonna explore this. We're gonna take our friend Idira, of course. Bottomless Pit. Let's see what we can find in this bottomless pit. We have butterflies, which are pretty. We have goods. Inside the containers are the remnants of stones and frescoes depicting a black spot surrounded by structures of some sort. There is an inscription. I... I did it? The barely noticeable words in shaky handwriting read, Touch the darkness and the darkness will accept you. Alright, sounds ominous. I'll lay claim to the stars. A rusty cogitator. This explorator is blessed okay. with multifunctionality. Numerous ropes and cables end abruptly at the very edge of the pit, vanishing into the gathering darkness. Follow More goods. Oh, wait. It's weird. My mind is completely empty. Not a single whisper, no premonitions, nothing. Just empty. Okay. Operation successful. Okay. Rudimentary tools and devices are now covered in a layer of dirt and local flora. The witch's mind is at ease. I must be doubly on my guard. Okay, so None shall is there nothing in else in way. here? Oh, there is. The darkness swirls beneath your feet, a void of impenetrable gloom. You do not hear a single sound from the depths of the pit. No wailing wind, no rustle of dust. Examine the pit. The bright daylight cannot pierce the darkness lying over the slopes. The longer you look into its depth, the stronger the feeling grows that this darkness isn't just an absence of light. It is something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the farthest stars or swallowing a galaxy. Through sheer force of will, you avert your gaze. Creepy. Idira tilts her head to the side, listening to something. Then she scowls and spits on the ground. Grox knows what it is. It's beyond my remit. Hmm. I will step back from the pit. But, you know, this being a first playthrough, I want to explore it. So, I just quick saved. Let's lean over and stretch your hand to the darkness. This is something that I normally wouldn't do, I think. At the edge of your consciousness, you sense something slimy and intangible answering your invitation for contact. It seeps into your thoughts, tasting your emotions. Surprise and curiosity envelop you, but these feelings are not your own. I, okay, let's just see what this does. Submit to the entity's will. You are hit by a sudden wave of all-consuming silence. A moment later, the world around you disappears, leaving only black, viscous, boundless darkness. The absoluteness of, its over of it is overwhelming, and you slowly sink into the void that is sucking you in. What are you? 
You are looking at a tiny person peeking over the edge of the bottomless darkness. You are looking at yourself. Then you blink and see the same place, except the camp around you is full of life. Scholars are zipping back and forth between field structures, switching on unfamiliar machines in an attempt to know the unknown. A moment later they are all nude, singing and dancing around the pit. The smell of heated bodies, blood and sweat assault your nostrils, drowning out your thoughts. One by one, the lunatics fall into the embrace of nothingness. You make out toad-like Xenos building a temple around the pit. They are praying, conducting rites, making sacrifices to the darkness in hopes of unimaginable gifts. Then, then darkness shrouds everything once more. Or rather, you are the darkness. Something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the farthest stars or swallowing a galaxy. But some will pulls you out of the cozy embrace of the void toward the light, and you snap out of the vision as sorrow fills you from within. What do you want from me? You find yourself on the floor of an abandoned estate. You feel someone's disgusting presence behind you, and raspy, foul breath tickles your nostrils. A drop of water trickles down from the stone ceiling and shatters the silence with a deafening splash. The heavy door before you is open. You could try to escape. It is now or never. So we can get up and run as fast as you can, or we can turn around and fight the creature. Yeah. You turn around, intent on killing the thing with your bare hands, but then exclaim in hesitation. You recognize the disfigured monster that is staring at you balefully from the darkness. You let out a heavy, a heavy sigh and a cloud of hot, fetid vapor settles on the smooth surface of the mirror. You sit at the apex of a massive onyx pyramid. Your abilities are limitless. With a single thought you can raise mountains, drain an ocean or disperse the clouds. But nobody cares anymore. Soon your brothers and sisters will sacrifice you so that they can share your power among themselves and guide the civilization to prosperity. Uh, I don't like that. Kill your brother. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's 89 versus 80. I, I guess this is the, the good aligned option. Let's proceed with the ceremony for the sake of future generations. Solemnly, you are placed on a cold black slab covered in glowing script. You close your eyes and pray as your brothers and sisters rip your seven hearts out of your chest. By the end of the ceremony, they are gnawing on every last bone of your body, shedding tears of sorrow. You join your ancestors within the black monolith, and for many centuries thereafter, you watch from above as your civilization blossoms. You are lying on burning sand, struggling to open your eyes, but your eyelids feel too heavy. You can barely move your arms and legs, your stomach hurts, your throat is bone dry. Several of your kin, all emaciated, are scattered around you. The hunger is so strong that it is driving you mad, and you let out a bestial howl. Something metallic clings next to your right hand. A knife. This is it. You can survive. You must survive. All you need to do is decide whom to sacrifice. Cut off a piece of yourself. The decrepit old man in the tatter... Uh, the strange animal creature... Uh, the brawny woman, bloody hands, elite mutants... I don't want to hurt others, I'm going to do it to myself. You bite down on your belt and cut off a piece of your own flesh. The pain is so terrible that your vision darkens. Unable to bear it, you let out a frenzied groan, but you still shove the slimy scrap into your mouth and swallow it. Ugh. You can sense the darkness's triumph. It has been following your thoughts with great interest, rummaging in your memories, studying your emotions, savoring your resolve and rage. Its bottomless gut rumbles with satisfaction. At last, grateful, it lets you go and presents a parting reward. Well, <clears throat> we got experience. Uh, but I... Did I get a new talent? Uh, it's not the right person. This is all the same thing. Same thing. Wait, what is this? Ah, uh, so officer, uh, more than possible. This is all things we chose. 
Origin. Voidborn, Fortune, Noble, You Serve Me, Contagious, blah blah. Great importance, you go on. Slice, slice, slice. Champion of the Abyss. Permanent plus two bonus to weapon skill tests and plus five bonus to coercion tests. This is what we gained. And what is this? Ah, I think this is from our colony. Okay, Champion of the Abyss. Okay, fine. I was actually expecting something evil to come out of that darkness thing, but it's actually just a bonus. Well, let's go. A nice little bonus. I'm not gonna complain. So, the jungle... Uh... It still shows the point of interest, but it's it's done, right? I would think it's done. <clears throat> A damn it. Oh, we leveled up. Nice. Adamantine and what else do we have? Okay. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to look at these shoes. So, I have the Psyker's Footwear. Grant their wearer plus 3% dodge until the end of combat for each power they use. Versus the wearer gaining perception bonus percent dodge until the start of their next turn for each enemy affected by their Psy power or Psyker Staff attack. And also stacks. Um... I think the Psyker's footwear might be better. Because it's unti until the end of combat. So these are better for the long run. These are better for the short run. Man, because... Perception bonus would be a 5. So this means if I lightning and I hit 4 enemies, I'm going to get a 20% bonus to dodge. But it's only for one turn. Although, that is a lot. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, wait. This is for each enemy affected. This is for each Psy power used. So, even my buffs will count. Okay, I prefer this one then. The one I have. I'm gonna quick save and we're gonna try and engage in, in space battle. A report shows up on your personal cogitator screen. Unknown ships are towing the Interstellar Sextant, a cargo ship belonging to one of Footfall's wealthiest traders. It looks like the pirates have bitten off more than they can chew, and have now been forced to drag the ship to a more secluded place where they can plunder it undisturbed. Attack them. As soon as they see you, the escort ship charge into battle at... Uh, wait, sorry? As soon as they see you, the escort ships charge into battle at once, while the captive Sextant powers up its warp engines. Unless you interrupt the preparation for the jump, the cargo ship will forever vanish beyond the veil of the Immaterium, along with all the riches it is carrying. Wait, but are, are we trying to also get that ship? It, this feels piratey. <laughs> Send all available forces to intercept the interstellar section, don't let it get away. Okay. Given that there was no option to be good here and help out the guy, I'm gonna try and get the goods. <laughs> if we don't die, of course. For the glory of the dynasty. Oh my lord, there's so many. And these are the ones that were killing me. Okay, so this is the sextant. And then we have one... We have a destroyer, a viper class, and a cobra class. I'm guessing the viper is worse. Well, let's see what we can do, I suppose. Macro cannons, volley! Fire right now! Okay. Oh, this guy is escaping already. So we can ignore him. Okay, that's good. Right? Let me make sure. 
disengaging. Yeah, he's, he's going away. <clears throat> so I could attack this guy. I have four rounds to do it. I wonder if these guys will go for him or if they will go for me. That's what I'm kind of scared of. Oh man, I, I cannot actually hit him. But if I use this, I probably can. Okay, let's try. So I want to get... Like this. Fire the lance batteries! Okay, good. I'm gonna get some torpedoes. <clears throat> Can I ram you? Nah, I think I would have to be in this line. Sad. Okay, so I think I will just get over here. And maybe turn this guy. I wonder if he turns there or here. We're gonna find out, I suppose. Or I could do this and shoot... Yeah, okay, I'll do this and shoot him. It's better. Okay, very good. He's also disengaging. I could just kill him. In case we get some... Uh, scrap from it. Sure. Killed. Let's pass. This guy is going away. I will ignore him for now. What are you doing? It feels like they're ignoring me. Okay. I think I'm going to... Yeah, because he's counted as an enemy. He's not even neutral or friendly. So I think I'll put my torpedoes here and then use my ability to move the torpedoes in the next turn to, to blow him up. That's my plan here. Okay. <clears throat> so, torpedo control. Let's go over here. That was barely any damage. Holy crap. Okay, but we, we blew up the ship at least. Uh, the, um, the shield. So I'm thinking about maybe using a lance weapon and then ramming into him. Okay, we have new heading. Ah, uh, damn it. I, I can't ram into him. I, I don't have the, the, um, the angle for it. This will work, however. So, if I come over here, it's... It still works. Okay. This one's going to us. It is a shame that I can't do more. Okay, you can run away. Don't care about you. Are you gonna shoot him? No, they're ignoring him. They, they're just coming after me, I feel. <clears throat> That's bad. Okay. So, I only have two more rounds to deal with him. But if I come over here, I can... I can't actually ram. Because I'm already in a, a very far away state. Okay, I would never be able to ram him. I'm thinking about getting over here still. And I can even hit this guy in the process. And we ignore the torpedoes. 
So I like this plan. Leave the hull strewn across the stars. Oh, they surrendered. What? So, did, okay. I guess I I won that. Okay. So now I'm <laughs> I'm in a bad spot. Had I known that was how it's gonna it was gonna play out, I would have played differently. Uh, okay. Fire right now. The damage. Let's get some torpedoes over here. Annihilate them. And I'm gonna get hurt. Okay, he's going away. As long as I can make them disengage, I don't care about anything else. I don't need to kill them. Bitch. Yeah, my torpedoes won't reach them. My plan for the torpedoes were to hit that one. Damn it. <clears throat> this is very bad. This is very, very bad. This is horrible. <laughs> I might be able to blow this guy up. If I get torpedo control back. Yes. <clears throat> awesome possum. I can shoot him right now with these two, which is awesome for me. I think I might be able to win this. Salvo. Uh, if I don't miss everything. Leave the hull strewn across the stars. And they surrendered. Okay. So as long as we're able to avoid these torpedoes, we are fine. Okay, let me actually see if I can kill him. Uh, like this. Yeah, bitch. <clears throat> nice. I, I really hope I'm not putting myself in a position to get hit by this. And I don't know how this will turn. <laughs> okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna quick save. To try and understand how this turns. Because if it turns left, I don't want it. If it turns right, I do want it. Okay. Good. We can play like that. Onward. That guy is running away. Don't care about him. The torpedoes cannot reach me. And they blew up. So I think we won. Nice. Ours. We got... I think we got the right one, yeah? The Starbreaker Lance Weapon. Medium range dorsal lance weapon dealing 32 to 40 damage. Not sure if that's good or not. We had 55 scrap. Uh, which will not cover the repairs. But we won. And that's what matters to me right now. So, Void Ship Management. We got this thing. Currently we have Mazoa Macro Cannons. Short range dorsal macro cannons which fire two shots, dealing 14 per shot. Okay, so this one is better. The only consideration I have regarding this versus that is that... Given that this one shoots multiple shots, it might actually be a good way to deal with mirror image uh, enemy ships, while this one will only break a single, a single image, I would imagine. <clears throat> well, we'll see. Quick save. So what we have? We what is this? Ah, flagship. We have a route, which is red. I could get to it, but I don't want to. We would have to chart a course to get there. 
Or I can once again go this way. Okay, let's go this way. When the Lord Captain arrived on the, sh on the bridge during the warp jump, he found the on-duty officers in a state of utter confusion. They claimed they had been receiving orders from the bridge for several minutes, orders authorized by the road trader. But the Lord Captain had been absent. Curiously, the orders had been signed by the late Theodora von Valencius. After a thorough investigation, the tech priest attributed the strange incident to the whims of the machine spirits. Uh, this might be because we're doing the unsafe routes. The ship left the hostile Immaterium and returned to real space. But it's, it's not hurting me in any way that I can tell. Okay, go again. This time, no dialogue. And we're gonna go over here. Colony Falstone has begun a new stage of development. Okay. So I just went into my colony uh, management screen. I like this, this world. High Factotum Generous Denrock. Lord Captain, there is a conflict between the followers of the Order of the Hammer and the refugees from the Winterscale Dynasty domain. An argument broke out near the tomb of the ascetic Nicomedes Cephas, and the tomb was damaged in the fray. The pilgrims revering Cephas' rival, Philo... Philopaiminis Akkad of Malpi claims Cephas to be a thief who had stolen the relics of Saint Cognatius and distributed the sacrament, the sacrament of his resting place to sate his greed. The Order of the Hammer is furious at theoretical statements and the desecration of the ascetic's burial site. Okay, so we, we clearly have some decisions to make. But first off, who is this Nicomedes and Philopimenes? What is the issue here? Saint Nicomedes Cephas is a missionary who arrived in the expanse alongside the founders of the Order of the Hammer, offering them valuable guidance for colonizing Falstone. He converted many worlds to the Imperial Creed, but his most famous feat was his search for the burial site of the legendary preacher Saint Cognatius, who conquered the expanse thousands of years ago, leaving behind a, sc a scores of relics. Cephas was able to track down some of those relics. The Order was named after the power hammer of Saint Cognatius, Pious Charge. Very cool. Philopiminis of Malpi is a priest from the Winterscale domain. He preached in the same times as Nicomedes Cephas and denounced him for the false veneration of Saint Cognatius. He believed that Cognatius preached the incomprehensibility of the highest wisdom to the people and that any attempts to learn it would only lead to heresy. He called the search for Saint Cognatius' burial site blasphemy and the collection of relics looting and soliciting. In his opinion, the sacred object should not be congregated in one place, but should find haven across the many worlds. The relics are power, and their aggregation gives way to pride. I mean, I, I can see the point of both of them. What say my advisors? By coming to a foreign realm, the Malpians are demonstrating their insolence. Penance should be imposed on them, and this is kind of what I'm thinking of as well. We will send them on a pilgrimage to find the relics of St. Cognatius and to learn the ways of St. Cephas. In this way, they would be of use for returning the lost relics, and the Order of the Hammer would be satisfied with a just verdict. There was a similar case of belief dispute at the 5th Ophelian Cathedral, and the conflict between the two cults was resolved in sacred duel. Twenty champions from each side came forward, both sides vowing to accept the victor's teachings if they lost. I propose to invoke the Cathedral's edict and settle the dispute in the same way. Hmm. They believe that their faith is superior, then let them prove it. Subject them to a severe test of faith. If they survive it, they will, be pr they will have proven their steadfastness. Even if the Hoarder of the Hammer does not accept their arguments, it would be easier for them to recognize the newcomer's right to interpret the ways of St. Cognatius if they prove it with their own blood and pain. Oh, so now we have more options. Okay, so before I read these, let's just see what we have. We can gain security. Complacency and a power sword. We gain complacency but lose efficiency. We get the Malpian Shrouds. Whenever the weather deals damage with a melee attack, they gain toughness plus three times iconoclast level temporary wounds. That is very decent. The wielder's melee attacks deal an additional temporary wounds via by two damage. This is very nice. This is a very nice cloak for Avalard. 
Damn. <clears throat> and finally, we also get the Malpian Shroud, but we lose complacency. <laughs> okay. So Heinrich is right, let us send the most zealous ones on a repentant pilgrimage to retrieve the relics. For security. We should follow the edict of the 5th Ophelian Cathedral. Let might decide whose beliefs are just. Complacency and power sword. Let them bring forth the representatives and try to negotiate some form of coexistence. I don't like this one because it's kind of like net neutral. We shall allow the Malpians to prove the strength of their convictions through a severe trial of faith. This is Abelard's suggestion, and we get the Malpian Shroud. Or the Malpians display impressive zeal. I charge the Order of the Hammer to welcome a hundred of their new arrivals into their ranks. Uh, let them learn one another's ways and come, come to accept this distinct path toward the reverence of Cognatius. I'm leaning towards this one uh, simply because of the Shroud. Because I don't know... Can I see my characters while I'm on the screen? I can't. My only question is if Abelard is an iconoclast or if he's dogmatic. He might be dogmatic. That is my only concern here. <laughs> is that I cannot see it. Err... Okay, I'm gonna go for the Shroud, and if I find out that he's not Iconoclast, I will just load the game and, and do this again. So yeah, give me the Shroud. Let them show the weight of their words and teachings. 100 Malpins have volunteered to undergo the trial of faith. 74 have survived, proving the steadfastness of their beliefs and earning respect of the Order of the Hammer. The indomitable teaching of Philo... Philo Philopimenus of Malpi laid down deep roots upon the hard soil of Falstone. The followers of his teachings were zealous and determined. Oh. Okay, we completed the High Throne. Oh, and now we got Security and Profit Factor and the trophies. Okay. So, before we do anything else, he is Iconoclast. Level 2. Okay, my friend. So, I still like his cloak. Because burning, toxin, and bleeding would just remove them. But it's not mandatory that I have this. So this one is toughness bonus plus three times the iconoclast level. So the iconoclast level is two. This would mean six plus six. So 12 temporary wounds. Which also means all his attacks are going to deal an extra six damage. Yeah, buddy. Take that. And let's be happy. Oh, and before I forget, uh, colony management is why the rogue trader tested the Malpian's faith. Okay. And for our next projects, we can only pick two. Why? Ah, because this would require more reputation, reputation and resources, reputation... And a whole bunch of stuff that I do not have. Profit factor and security. Reputation. Plus one for all colonies in complacency. The souls of the crewmen laid to rest in the Falstone Cemetery send blessings to their ship. The flagship gains a plus 5% bonus to evasion. It's cool. Requiem, Requiemator. Whenever the wearer kills their target with a melee attack, all enemies in the tool cell radius around the wearer suffer wearer's willpower bonus mental damage. That's kind of cool for a melee psyker. But for us, it doesn't really matter too much. Efficiency and complacency. This one is just profit factor and fellowship of the void. Profit factor plus three. And another contract. Or just complacency. I think I'm going to hold out for these other ones. Because currently, the ones I have available are not very good. So, two complacency or one profit factor versus, for example, three profit factor, another contract. I, I think I prefer to wait. Yeah, I, I will wait. So, let's visit this system. 
and see what it holds for us. Telicos Epsilon. Master Helms on Revor. Lord Captain, according to telemetry, the parameters of this system match those of Telicos Epsilon, home to the agri-world Janus that belongs to the Von Valencia's dynasty. We have received a Vox message from the planet. The agri-world governor officially welcomes the rogue trader and reports that she has begun preparations for a formal reception to celebrate the arrival of the planet's sovereign. Your subjects are looking forward to your visit. Okay, so, world shapers. The agri-world Janus is a key source of food for planets in the Von Valencia's protectorate. The rogue traders should do everything possible to reintegrate the planet into the Kronos Expanse economy quickly. Make planet fall. The governor of Janus is looking forward to the rogue traders' visit, where she will personally welcome him at an official ceremony. Alright. I had something that said... Um, that I had to choose which one I would go to first. I think it was this one, maybe? But in any case, I think I prefer to, to have this one be done first. And then I would go for the other ones. I will begin by exploring the other planets in the region. Trophies, sure. Let's go over there. Lady Theodora loved frozen worlds. I never did discover the reason why, but the Lord Captain never missed a chance to visit such a planet, even on the slightest pretext. Okay, just some lore. And I'm gonna quick save this. We're gonna go to Janus. Yeah, this is a, a livable world. And the only thing we have is Governor Viat's estate. We shall take our regular people. Actually, wait. I am gonna level them up first if I can. Yeah, okay. So, I'm gonna go over the level ups as I usually do, and I will come back once I have decided what I'm gonna be taking. Be right back. Okay, <clears throat> this level up might actually be simple. From what I can tell, at least my main character is gonna have an AP increase. So one more AP on the 20th rank. So given that everybody is the same level, I think we're all... Or the same rank, sorry. I will use the correct terminology. I would expect all of them to get this AP increase. And then we have a characteristic increase as well. So uh, since I have Fellowship available... Fellow fellowship is my main characteristic for my officer, and I think also for tactician, so I'm going to be taking this first. Level up done. Let's look at Idira. Oh, she has three things. Okay, so AP increase. We get an additional thingy over here. And I'm thinking if I want something different than willpower... Maybe going for Perception, which he also uses. Okay, so let me think about this one. Okay, so back to Idira. Uh, I, I am still going to continue giving her points in Willpower. I was thinking about rounding out Perception, but let's be honest. Her main stat is always going to be Willpower. So I'm going to keep increasing Willpower every single time I get the chance. And after that, we have a common talent. I was initially thinking about going for something like Nimble to give her dodge, or even It Will Not Die, which would just increase the wounds by half of the character's level. It should say rank, I feel. <laughs> um, which would mean uh, 10 additional wounds, which I think is quite nice. But I did find that Psy Rating 2 gets unlocked at level 20, so that's going to be always my choice. So that's done. AP increase, willpower, Psy rating 2. Cassia is kind of the same thing as my main character. We have more AP increase. And here I have 70 willpower, 60 perception. Uh, let me think about this one a little bit. And back. So, it's going to be willpower again. <laughs> same reasoning as Idira. I was looking over these. I was considering more points in fellowship for her officer abilities or grand strategist but ultimately 
her her real power is in the navigator ability so more willpower increases that i'm gonna go for willpower so ap and willpower argenta let's see if it's easy we get ap increase and the characteristic, this is going to be easy as well. I don't have anything to round out. Perfect. Oh, no. This one is actually not obvious. This one isn't obvious at all. Because if I want to start using heavy weapons... Okay. This is important. It's a good thing I remember this. What is my heavy bolter? Heavy bolter... Where are you? Here. It requires 60 strength. And if we look at the level up, and we go for the common talents, I will have... Let me see here. No, this is... Uh, I don't have this yet. Oh, never mind. I can't. It, I might have it. Um, where is it? Heavy armor. Okay. Heavy weapon proficiency. Reduces the required strength value for heavy weapons by 25. She is currently at 30. So, in order for us to reach the 60 threshold, I would need to have heavy weapon proficiency plus an extra 5 in strength to be able to reach the 60 of the heavy weapon. I'm just thinking because this is available talent, this is a common talent. Okay, so yeah. I will be taking strength here. I only get extra characteristic, oh no, I get it here, sorry, I get it here as well. Okay, so if I can also get it here, I will just take uh, ballistic skill right now. Double checking. Yeah. Okay, so AP, ballistic skill. Done. Pascal. Oh, God. He also has more stuff. So I'm going to have to think about this one. Be right back. Okay. We are back. So for Mr. Pascal, I have decided to give him ballistic skill. Because I'm, I want to keep pumping his hit chance, basically, with his weapons. With his ranged weapons. And for the common talent... I was initially looking at something like Nimble for dodge, or it will not die, same reason I talked about for uh, Idira, just giving him more wounds. But I actually ended up by going to Steel of the Forge. We have picked up some more heavy armor pieces, and Pascal, he actually kind of... What did I just do? He kind of synergizes with that, um, because he has Reject the Flesh. Right, so this means that this character gains one deflection plus 10% armor and suffers a minus 5% bonus to dodge. It doesn't mean that we have to keep going for armor and deflection, but he gets deflection from over here. He will also be getting deflection, I believe, from heavy armor. Yep, uh, armor deflection over here. Yep. More armor. And even more deflection from the talent. So I think it plays out nicely into him. So take that. Let's get Seal of the Forge. And also, he gets more movement points and he cannot fall prone. Which is also a very nice buff here. Okay. And moving on to Mr. Abelard. This one should be kind of simple. We get AP. And I think I'm going to be going for... Strength or Weapon Skill... I guess I'll go for strength, for right now at least, just to round it off. Okay, and level ups are done. Let's go and see the Governor Viat's estate. Taking our people. And hopefully we won't get a very, very long dialogue. <laughs> this is a very jungly world. We have Birds of Paradise. Uh, uh, <laughs> and a very pretty palace. Uh, 
Are you friend or foe, Mr. Sniper? Well, people are happy to see us. Vistenza Viet. A lavishly dressed noblewoman in an opulent silk gown watches you with an expe expectant air, but then gracefully bows her head. Gem encrusted implants protrude from her arms and neck. I welcome you on behalf of the noble house Viet Ar Ab Aram. My name is Vistenza Janus Viet Ab Aram of Coronus. By the grace of the Emperor and the will of the rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, I serve as planetary governor and imperial commander-in-chief of this world. Vistenza Viet raises her head slightly. Vistenza Viet turns to Abelard. And greetings to you, noble Versarian. It has been years since your last visit to Janus. I am glad to see you again. It is a good sign when a rogue trader Seneschal does not visit the subject planet for a long time. Isn't that correct, Lady Viat? It means the governor is taking care of all matters and there is no need for the Seneschal to interfere. Vistenza lets out a musical laugh. I hear praise in those, worlds, uh, in those words and I thank you for them. She turns once again to you. In truth, your arrival in the place of the esteemed Lady Von Valencius is quite unexpected. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell her she's dead. So, Theodora von Valencius is dead, I am now the head of the dynasty. Such tragic news. I will see to it that the planet observes a month of mourning. And she was interrupted. Uh. Well done, sniper. Oh god. We are gonna have a combat sequence, aren't we? I believe we are. Submit and you'll die quickly. Okay, let me see what we have. For it. To see if I want to save this for the next episode or if I'm fine doing this now. I think for the most part I should be fine. They are all kind of low HP. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's let's get this done quickly. We were ambushed, but Cassia can play first. And I think I'm going to... Bring her a little bit up here, so that Idira can lightning up these three enemies here. She might actually hit Pascal, so I'll have to think about this a little bit. Um, Idira. If only that were possible. Oh, too far? Okay, then wait. Idira. Emperor, give me strength. Yeah, this this hits Pascal. So, 26 damage versus 1 to 40. Man, this area is so small, it makes me sad. <laughs> Do I want you to take a hit? I don't think so. I can just hit one of these and be done with that. Um... So, I think I'm gonna start by making somebody my prey, because I usually forget. Oh, right, it was instant. Because I, I got that option for fast combat, okay. 29, 26... This doesn't matter. I can use Analyze Enemies. What? That's what also you? instant. What? I'm not used to this yet. <laughs> 42 damage. 5 to 6. It has a dodge chance. Okay, I will try this out at a later point, I feel. Let's just do this. We'll do. Okay. Cuts and cracks appear on your skin. So this was a Perils of the Void, right? I, I, I'm not sure. Does this mean that my Psyche rating went up? Yeah, it did. Warp conductor gloves. Okay, cool, cool. Let's buff up Abelard because why not? <clears throat> if he goes into battle. And now we can pass the turn. It's my turn now. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe just trying to kill this guy straight up with Argenta. Or if I want to do more damage with Idira. I think I'll just do more damage with Idira. 
Let's see how they respond to this. Okay, so let's do this again. On it. But of course, be gone. Some pain channeling. Good. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. <clears throat> Cassie is playing. I think I will want the front line here, give everybody in my area here more armor. I will put the back line here. I'm not accustomed to being And there around. really won't be much of a rear area. But I guess I can place it Isn't here just in case. Job for the serfs? We have trench line stratagem. Choose one area. For one round, all allies gain cover, efficiency, and reroll failed characteristic tests. Additionally, covering the air doesn't take any damage. Okay, so it doesn't really matter too much. But it's free. I can put it here. And now what do I want? Oh, everybody's playing before them. So they're, they're just dead. Just do this. Try and stun them. Okay, so... Reveal the light. I'm a navigator, not a servitor. On Idira as well? No. I will do this. Isn't this a job for the serfs? <laughs> and Okay, strange. I feel like in 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 a previous episode when I used this before this I could no longer use it, but I might be wrong. None of them are stunned. I will just go again. Are you guys stunned? Stunned, not stunned. Pass the turn. Argenta. You can go over there. He's not melee. And burst in this... Oh, I don't want to kill my friend. But I can burst like this. So, concentrated fire. God Emperor, move through me! Be the fire in my heart! I don't think I need devastating attack. Let's just fire like this. Dead and dead. And if I run and gun, I can still shoot another guy. So, sure. Weak. These should never miss, according to our trinket. And this guy would likely die to poison afterwards. Or I can even knock him down. Faith without deeds is worthless. Or I'll try and knock this guy down instead. Perfect. Drop that. Fast turn. Do not shoot my. Just a minor setback. Uh, it's always the same thing. Let's do that. I think I want to go over here and charge with. Actually, let's give everybody. Brace for impact in case something else happens after this is done. I'm going over here because I want to charge this guy, but stay in this position to kill them both. Even though this guy dies to poison. So we do this. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Nice. And now we do this. Indeed. Done. game. Oh, there's a cutscene. Oh, there's more enemies coming in. Oh. Thank you, sniper. Alright, so... Yeah. As much as I would like to also do this right now, this feels like it will take a little bit more time. So... I don't appreciate um, ending an episode in the middle of combat, but I will do it here because otherwise it will be too long and we're going to continue in the next one. So yeah, 
as always, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, uh, watching some Rogue Trader. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Any questions or suggestions, you know what to do. Leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming soon. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.